Hey, what's going on, Chess Lover? This is uh, Maurice Bishop. And today I had a, a member ask me, you know, what happens if um, you play D4 and your opponent plays on D5 and everything. So um, I'm not really a D4 player, but I've actually been playing with this uh, opening with the D4 uh, quite some time now. So um, I want to show you exactly what I play uh, when somebody played D5 on me. Um, a lot of y'all might know the whole C4, you know, the Queen's Gambit, or maybe some other funny stuff with um, the E4, you know, where they play that type of Gambit. Um, nah, I don't do none of those or whatever. So the move I actually play is uh, actually Knight C3. And this is actually called the Jabava London System. Um, Ginger GM actually um, talks about this as well. And there's actually uh, a chessable site where you can actually um, learn this open as well. Alright, so knight c3 uh, is played on uh, knight f6, you know, somebody may like playing the Indians, uh, King's Indian attack or, you know, uh, the Nemzo Indian or whatever, things like that. So you may see uh, a lot of that stuff, but in this situation, uh, we're going to go bishop f4, you know, uh, with bishop f4. Um, the reason why bishop f4 is played because we want to play e3 to support this um, pawn on d4. Uh, and, and also the, the real reason why we go bishop a4, f4 first because if you look back, we don't want to lock this bishop um, in here because it will be inactive and everything. We don't want that. So we want to bring this um, bishop out on bishop f4. All right. So bishop f4 is played, and notice, you know, we're uh, controlling this um, e5 square, you know, the, um, the pawn and the bishop controlling this e5 square, which is um, number one, right? And I don't know what it is, but for Nimzo Indian players and for people that like to play, um, well, maybe not the King's Indian, but I guess in this type of opening, you get a lot of Nimzo Indian players, I guess because Madness Carson and Hikaru plays it and stuff. So you get a lot of this e6 um, thing. Um, the thing about this is you leave your light square bishop um, inactive, and it's um it'll take a not I'm not gonna say it's a hard time, but I, I'm I'm not I'm not a fan of this at all. I'm just not. But um, if they play e6, I play e3, and then usually um, black will try to open up the center with c5. And like I said, the stuff that I'm playing, this is actually an actual game. That I played against somebody, and this is stuff that they did. So the rule of thumb, and you'll probably learn this uh, when you uh, look this up yourself uh, about the uh, Jabava uh, London system. But uh, the rule, the principle is, if they go c5, and obviously if your bishop is on f4 and your knight on c3, you should always go knight b5. Why do you go knight b5? Knight, d knight b5 is not just to go knight c7 check and take the rook. The whole point of it is, you know, the the I guess the best defense for black is knight a6. And the whole point is, y'all know the principle, the knight on the rim is them. Uh, not just that, but you're kind of taking the knight out the game. And now this knight is actually stuck defending uh, the c c7 square, you know, which is number one. So then uh, in this uh, position, after we do that, we go pawn c3. And we go pawn c3 just in case if he goes e catches d4. You know, we don't want to bring this bishop uh, out here to check us at all. You know, with just one thing. So every, every move that we do it has a, a, a purpose. It has a reason and stuff, right? So then, of course, you know, black, you know, their principle is, you know, I want to uh, castle king side, you know, get some play in. And usually they'll go bishop e7. I'll go bishop d3, which is actually what I played. I played bishop d3. And the move that was played was actually b6, I guess, you know, I guess if Rakazin didn't want to get his other piece out, because obviously this e5 can't push on a square because on um, the bishop and the pawn is actually supporting that, and this bis and this this pawn is blocking his own bishop from getting any active square, so he got to go bishop b7, right? So b6 is played, and I actually played knight f3, and like I said, all this is pretty much on um, book or whatever. But like I said, everything I'm doing is with a purpose. Um, bishop b7 is played. And everything, and I go uh, 95 automatically. And the purpose of on this London system is really a king side attack, because then we could go g4, h4, and maybe f3 if we have to. 
you know, and also um, keeping this all night or keeping black um, position all cranked up and everything, which is also what we're doing as well. So it's like it's kind of like we're controlling the queen side and the king side, which is what I like. I like control, you know, things like that. Um, but after uh, 95 uh, Black Castles, you know, he definitely want to um, try to bring his knight back up. Maybe it's changed this annoying knight off of B5. Um, but uh, I actually do something else, though. I go H4. This is where I go. I go H4. And my opponent um, decided to go knight F D7 to try to get this annoying knight off of E5. But then I go on um, queen h5 and everything, which is what I did. So right now I'm threatening on um, queen catchers on h7 checkmate. Uh, if you look at this move, uh, it's kind of <laughs> it's pretty crazy, yo. Um, but the move that he actually did is he, he actually goes f5. This is the move that he played. He played f5. Um, I wound up going on g4, um, which is what I did. And... Um, when he went G4, uh, he wound up going G6, which was uh, actually a blunder because after Knight catches G6, man, I pretty much had the upper hand in this. Um, when he went, uh, obviously when I went Knight catches G6, he didn't take back. He decided to go um, Queen E8. So then I decided to go um, E catchers um, at five and everything. And um, he wound up taking uh, I took back uh, with the actually I didn't take back with the pawn. I didn't take back with the pawn. I actually uh, went rook g1, which is what I did. But you could just see how tactical uh, this um, this um, opening is and everything. Like how quickly uh, we are already on the 15th move, and I'm already opening up um, Black's king side, uh, which is pretty much what's going on. Um, but he doesn't move though. He he doesn't move. He goes on um, bishop. I mean, um, pawn uh, from g6 to g5. You know, which I understand his reasoning. But uh, I wind up going on uh, queen a6. Uh, like I said, he tries to defend with uh, rook f7, but I just go bishop castle g5. Uh, and again, uh, he he goes knight f8. I guess trying to do another. Uh, I don't know, like another move or whatever, but this pretty much um, loses and everything. I go bishop f6, and uh, he pretty much resigned um, after this because, as you can see, it's really nothing that he can do um, to stop me from mating, though. Um, if he goes on knight g6, then I got queen h8 uh, checkmate. Um, if he goes uh, rook g7, as you will see, this is also uh, checkmate. Um Again, there's really nothing that he can do uh, outside of this. Um, it, it just pretty much me. Um, but the whole purpose of of this um, Jababa uh, London system is, you know, uh, a kingside attack or whatever. But you're also cramping up his queenside, uh, which is what I love. Uh, another thing that I want to show you is um, if... Uh, Bishop f5 is played. Uh, I had Bishop f5 played on me um, a lot or whatever. But the rule of thumb is if they go to uh, Bishop f5, you want to go f3. You know, and if he goes um, e6 and everything, uh, you'll still have um, the pawn on e3. And again, if they go c5, you still have this uh, knight b5 um, rule as well if they go c5. And like always, knight a6. Um, is played, then you go c3. Uh, what else? Uh, and I think I had somebody play, I, ha I had somebody play this on me, um, uh, queen b6, uh, which I didn't really see any, um, purpose, um, with that instead of me going a4, uh, which was, uh, a good move, uh, for me. Because now there's no way you're going to really like get this knight out the way. And it's not like the knight can try to exchange because I got my bishop controlling that square and my knight um, controlling it. You know, I even had um, some people go, uh, I'm sorry, not, um, well, I did have somebody go knight b8 and I just took their rook on uh, with knight c7 check and taking a rook. So I did have that. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, you could just see how cranked up um, Black kind of is. I mean, yes, in this position, the bishop on f5 is a lot better than as y'all just saw previously when the bishop was coming to b7. But now that the bishop is um, out on um, bishop b7, you know, it seems um, pretty better. Uh, in this position, uh, it bishop goes to e7. I got g4 move. If he goes um, bishop g6, I got h4. And again, y'all, I'm just uh, white is just is just having an advantage with this. Uh, the knight can't go to knight b8. He can't try to exchange the knight. All uh, this knight on a rim is just stuck defending, and that's pretty much all this knight here is doing. You might as well say he just dropped a piece, which is why I like this opening. Um, he got h6 and everything, and um, you know, I can um probably do stuff like um bishop d3 if I wanted to. Or I can just uh, develop with knight e2, with, with knight g3, you know, certain things like that. Um, but yeah, if I go knight e2 and then black castles or whatever, this is kind of like, you know, a no-brainer. Uh, we just automatically just going to go g5. You know, and you can just see that this is just looking really good for um, white, which is what I like. Looking good for white. And then even if they try to do, and even if, um, and, and just remind you, the knight can't go to g4 and they can't go to e4. Uh, if the knight goes to d7, it's really not doing nothing. So most likely you're going to have your opponent maybe going uh, knight h5 for some reason. Um, I don't really recommend it, but usually in the positions like this and everything, I'll usually go knight g3 anyway. Uh, at this moment, I wouldn't care about um, the dark square bishop. Um, at this point, you know, even if he takes and I take and everything, uh, I still got this f4 uh, and this d4 supporting this e5 square. You know, I'm also threatening stuff like bishop d3 taking and then going queen d3 to threat uh, queen a7 mate. You know, it's just a lot of things that I can do uh, in this position, or I could just really just go uh, queen e2 and then over, still threatening mate. So. I just feel like white has a lot of options. Um, and even if white decides to take or whatever, I can still take back with the E point. And if he decides to um, check me, um, that's fine. We'll just go um, King F2, you know. And now, uh, in this in this sense, uh, knight can go back to C7 to try to uh, exchange and everything. Uh, he can. Um, but I do have uh, knight h5, as you can see where I'm going with this, uh, it's going to be bananas. So even after knight catches b5, bishop catches b5, uh, you can't go queen catches b5, obviously, because it's, um, queen is guarding it. Um, but even if he decides to go a6, um, you got to go bishop e2, only because you don't want to uh, lose this pawn on d4, um, at all. So that's one of the, um, things. Um, black is not going to want to give up this light square bishop, you know, definitely don't want to, um, give that up as well. So if anything, black may try to, um, uh, catch a foul or something like that. And then King G3. So all this stuff I'm showing y'all, I'm just showing y'all how, um, uh, I was playing it. Uh, like I said, I'm not a really a D4 player, but uh, I just know the concepts and I know certain ideas and everything. Uh, but this knight uh, on H5 is going to be very dangerous, which is why I like this knight. Um, I had a person um, try to double up on a rook file and things like that. But after um, bishop D3, uh, it gets crazy. Uh, my opponent actually goes rook C8. Uh, he didn't bother uh, taking... Uh, my pawn. Uh, after the game, I asked him why he didn't do it, and I guess he didn't like the bishop catches d3 thing. Even after um, I taken everything, he didn't like the bishop h7 check. Um, king catches h7, and then of course, um, I guess he didn't like um getting or uh, me getting that extra pawn um uh, with that because now I'm already threatening knight f6 check. You know. Certain things like that. So even after King G8, uh, he, I guess he was—he said he was afraid of this move because um, there ain't really nothing he could really do after after this, uh, which is what he was explaining to me. Because um, even after G6, I got uh, 
knight f6 check and if he goes king g7 i have checkmate uh also um he didn't like the move on um, f5 because then i'll just go on um, g6 and then he pretty much would have to sacrifice um this on um, rook because i'm already about to um double up and you know get checkmate on h8 so which is also actually um very true which is why um he didn't take the pawn so that's what i'm saying like i'm still learning about this open and stuff that's what i'm saying like this opening is pretty um it's very tactical man and it's very um i i, I actually i actually like it man um and i'm i'm starting to think about even maybe playing this in a tournament or whatever things like that but um but yeah guys uh hey thank you um duker uh, but yeah, after um, Rook C8, um, yeah, guys, man, I, I just pretty much go um, Bishop captures on G6. Uh, he actually takes, and I just go Queen D3. Uh, I didn't really care about him taking, which is actually what he did. Actually, he wound up taking, and um, I just go Queen capture G6 check. Um, he goes here, and I go Queen H6, already threatening Queen H8, uh, winning a Rook here, and um. He just goes um, queen c8, and um, I just go g6, threatening me already with um, queen h8, which is um, pretty much what I did. Um, he goes here, and then I pretty, pretty much like, you know, I'm killing it right now. Uh, he knew he was going to lose his rook, but he goes rook g8, and then I get in with queen f6 check. He goes um, qu king e8, I go queen f7 check, and he goes king d8. And I go queen catches d8 check, and he pretty much resigned because I have a pass pawn and um, everything else. So um, that's pretty much um, what he did, and he resigned. So, like I said, y'all, this is a little bit of my bad, y'all. I had to let the dog in, but uh, as y'all can see, y'all, this is um, pretty much um, the d4 move that I that I play the um, Jabava London system. You could definitely um, do more. Um, research on your own uh, with this opening, but this is something that I've been um, actually practicing on besides the l Shah system, which is what I still study on. I like playing the l Shah system and the Black Lion. So those are the ones that I've really been playing and I've really been like learning the Jababa system is, or Jababa London system is uh, what I like. So um, look guys, I hope you actually um, enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you um, you like share you know comment if i have any other questions uh, about this opening definitely you know hit me up you know um send me a comment you know let me know what you want to learn just like like how y'all interacted with me y'all telling me stuff that y'all want to learn about or things that i play you know certain openings that y'all want to know in depth of like how y'all always come to me and i'll do videos for it Definitely keep um, doing that because the more the more y'all tell me what y'all want to learn or whatever, I'm going to actually put it out there and I'll give y'all my honest uh, opinion of that opening or, you know, whatever analysis game that y'all have. You know, I'll give my honest uh, analysis on it and let y'all know about it, man. Like I said, y'all, man, uh, I'm here for y'all, man. And like I said, y'all help me out, too, because I learned a lot of stuff from y'all as well. You know, some of y'all are um, strong players. Some of y'all may not be. But like I said, I can still learn from y'all. So, um, yeah, man, definitely um, hit me up and everything. And, um, and if this is your first time looking at this video, don't forget to subscribe. Do not forget to subscribe. All right, y'all. Peace.